Yeah, I don't normally make videos like this, but I figured I'd do something completely different today since I never really made a channel intro. I originally started this channel over nine years ago, right before I went to New Zealand so I could make some videos while, over there while I was on vacation. And my early videos, I used to flip video camera, and those don't work very well, so the videos are not very good. One of the problems I have with those is you can't zoom out very far, and in my garage there's not a lot of room, so I can't stand back far enough. So some of the videos aren't very good. And uh, I also get a lot of comments by people thinking I'm a hobbyist. Yeah, I've been an auto mechanic and a welder and fabricator for over 25 years. And all the stuff I build, I build to make money with. And I've also started a Patreon account. It's exactly the same name as my uh, YouTube channel. And I'm going to do some uh, sponsored product reviews. I already did one. And uh, there's a few more probably coming. By doing that, I'll be able to uh, do better quality videos and have better content because then I can spend more money on uh, materials and a camera. I also need to replace this camera too because I figured out you can't put an external microphone on it, which it needs. So I, I guess I'll show you a few other projects I'm going to do. Yeah, I also get a lot of comments by people thinking that I spend way too much money on these projects. But I would rather just do it right and do it one time and not have to deal with it ever again. And also, some people that don't make videos don't realize how hard it is to make these videos because you have to try and remember everything to say in them. That's why a lot of my videos I make a whole bunch of short little clips and then I keep adding more and more stuff to it. And I'm going to take you in the other garage and show you a few things. Yeah, and here are all my automotive licenses and certifications. Yeah, I'm not going to show you the rest of the office because it's so messy it looks like the office of a genius. And here's all my ASEs. And I've already recertified, I think, three times. Yeah, and here's my brake and lamp adjuster's license. I ended up letting that go. That's for a car that has a salvage title. You do a brake and lamp inspection, which you never hardly ever use. And these are the two best licenses to get when you're in the state of California. They're for uh, smog licenses. They're for doing emissions testing. And I'll, I'm probably going to make some videos on how to diagnose different emissions related stuff. Yeah, and if you're just becoming an auto mechanic and you're planning on taking some ASCs, take all of them at once. You'll probably end up passing more of them than you think you will, and then you don't have as many to go back and take later. I passed all of them the first time around. But some people will say, well, I only do breaks, and they only take breaks, but uh, most of the shops around here, they pay you more for every one you have. And I've had all of them for like 15 years now, and the smog license I think I ha I've had for like 14 and a half years. Yeah, and this is how I actually named my YouTube channel. I've had this car for over 24 years now. There is a video on my channel about it, but it's a real old video and it's not in very good, not very good quality. It was done with like a first generation flip video camera. I'm planning on making a new uh, video of it. Yeah, and this car, I put all the options in it, too, back in the 90s. Yeah, it started out, I was just going to put uh, tilt steering, and then I got carried away. So now it's got everything. And this is an original Super Sport. Yeah, I also get a lot of comments on the water trap that I made here in the video. And they said, well, you didn't show anything. Well, the only thing you needed to see in the video is how to make the whole entire thing. And how this works, I've got so many airlines because there's three air compressors. And it's hooked to two different garages. And all, these, all of them have to be hooked up before the water trap is why it looks like this. But if somebody else were to make one, it wouldn't have to be quite this involved. Uh, the air goes in here. And this is two-inch pipe. 
And because it's, the pipe's much bigger, the air goes through here real slow and all the water goes down to that drain valve. And let me take you in closer now. Okay, so this is a three feet of two inch pipe. And the air goes out the top is where it hooks to all the quick couplers. And then there's a T that drops it down to three quarter inch, and this is where the air goes into it at. And then there's one foot of two inch pipe below that, and about three feet of uh, three quarter inch below that with the drain valve. And what that, that just gives you room for the water to build up where you don't have to drain it constantly. You can make this even bigger. And I found the best place to go to it was a plumbing supply store for the two inch pipe. It's a lot cheaper than buying it at Home Depot or Lowe's. Another thing that people keep saying is this is going to get corroded because you've got copper against steel. I had a different setup here before. I made this water trap with these metal brackets here. It was here for like five years and there was no corrosion at all. So it's going to be fine like that. Yeah, there's a whole lot of airlines. It runs through the upstairs of my house and everything else to the other garage. I had to take the plywood out of the floor to put it through there. And there's also going to be another lathe video that's almost finished. And I'm also planning on doing a video on how to replace a sub panel on your house. Yeah, a lot of people are buying more machinery and there's no place to put more breakers in here. And, that, uh, and it's real easy to do this and I'll show, make a video pretty soon on doing that. And I'm going to do two videos on, I'm going to take, tear down my shed and put a uh, have concrete poured there and put a 20-foot shipping container there and I'm also going to put another shed up then I'll have a lot more room in the garage because I can put some of the stuff that I don't use very often in there yeah, and I'm also thinking about doing some videos on uh, people that are just starting off as a mechanic or a welder what they should do not on actually how to do the work though and what they should do to get started and taking different tests and stuff like that yeah, I've gotten to be real good at taking tests. Yeah, I sure wasn't like that in high school. Yeah, I'm also planning on doing a whole lot more tool and equipment and welding related videos. I'm sure a lot of people are subscribed to me to see that. But pretty soon I'll start making some more of those. I just got to buy more tools to do the heck with. And at the end of this video, I'm going to add some tool related stuff. The tools that I bought to it. Yeah, I forgot to say in the video, I also have experience with working on electric tools and doing plumbing and electrical work. One company I used to work at, there was a whole bunch of guys from Mexico there, and they'd always call me Milusus. That means a thousand uses. Yeah, I just bought one of these style uh, air quick couplers. And here's who it's made by, and that's the part number. And it uses this style uh, other piece, the T style. And I think I'm going to replace all of mine with those, except the ones that are on the wall, just the ones on the ends of the air houses. If you really look online, you can find these for maybe about $16 to $17 a piece. So I think I'm going to buy uh, seven more of them and do that. It makes it much easier to put the tools on and off. Let me see if I can set the camera down and do this. Oops, I guess I got to do it the right way. Yeah, and it works real easy. Yeah, I also just got the Ramsey Customs uh, Turbo Cobra uh, Bender, and here's the information, if you can see that. And he sells this in a kit like this, or he sells it where you can buy just the plans. And uh, it's better to buy the kit because all the steel supply places make you buy 10 feet of each one of these pieces of metal. So it's highly unlikely you're going to find scraps of all the right stuff. And then once you buy that, it'll send you links to the plans and uh, some videos on how to do it. Now, I'll show what it looks like when it's completely together, but I'm not going to show how to put the thing together. Yeah, I just got a few more tools. And what this is is the universal adapter for the uh, cooling system pressure tester. And that just expands it in different uh, radiators. And the part number, let's see if we can get this, 
is 95-0750. And the Mechanic OC on his videos, he did a review on this. You can go check out his video. And what this is, is a relay tester. And it makes it real simple to test relays. And you can test relays without it, but it just takes more time. And I think the part number on this is ES191. And Bruce Allen did a, a video on it. You can go check out his videos. Yeah, I just got this. And what this is, is a tool for uh, grinding tungst TIG tungstens. And I got it from HTP. And before that, I bought this thing. I don't remember where I bought it at. It's been a long time ago. Then I could hold it at the right angle and turn it and grind it on a grinding wheel or the belt sander. But the thing I don't like about grinding them on the grinder or the belt sander is it's real hard on the grinding wheel. And it's almost like each time you do it, it's throwing, it wears a big groove in the grinding wheel. And it's like it throws little pieces of the grinding wheel back at you. Never ha actually had a problem with them getting contaminated, like most people say. But this should be much easier to do it like with those. And they also make some that are got adjustable angles too. This is the cheapest one. Yeah, and it, it grinds the tungstens real easy and does a good job. All you do is stick it in there and turn it on and spin this around in circles. Yeah, I just bought eight more of these type of quick couplers. Yeah, and this is the part number and the brand name. Then I can replace all of them on my air houses, except the ones the ones that are on the wall I'm not going to do. Looks like it's about 45 degrees in here. Yeah, I got all my uh, quick couplers chained up, changed over. And it's best to use this kind of a Teflon tape for gas pipes on airlines. It works better. Yeah, I also had to buy a heater. It's just too cold in here. Yeah, I just got this blowgun from uh, Summit Racing. It's a Milton S-157. And what it does is this hose attaches on, if you can see that, right on the end. And you can stick it in some kind of cleaner and then spray it at stuff. Yeah, I just got a few more things. Yeah, I got these type of pliers, uh, and the part number snap on or snap on PWZ-1, and they make like four different sizes of these, uh, and all it is is the number keeps going higher. And the snap on junkie, he did a review on these. I also got this uh, ring roller from uh, Harbor Freight, and the part number is uh, three six. 790 and I got some of these little clamps I wasn't sure which size I'm going to use so I bought two of them I'm going to replace the latch on the door of my uh, sandblast cabinet it's pretty cheap the one that's on there and these only cost about five bucks a piece and I bought them from a place called the toggle clamp store yeah here's what that other uh, clamp on their uh, door latch looks like on it which is much better than the original one Original one was just this cheap little thing, which would have eventually broke. Yeah, I just got one of these uh, plate lifting clamps. This one picks up a thousand kilograms, which is uh, 2,200 pounds. And this thing must weigh like 50 pounds. Yeah, I just got a few more tools. This is supposed to be the best one of these blow guns that sprays chemicals out like an engine. And it's made by a company called uh, Guard Air, and the part number is 79SG. These normally sell for about $80, but I found this one on eBay for $35, and, and nobody else bid on it, so I got it for $35. I also got this thing, and it's for uh, putting transmission fluid in the VWs. And the part number is ATF VW5, and if you type that in on eBay, you'll find it. And it also comes with uh, these adapters. And they also make a whole bunch more adapters that it doesn't come with, but you can buy separate. 
Yeah, I just got these uh, pliers, and what these are for is pulling out those plastic uh, rivets that are on cars. Normally, I take two screwdrivers and pull them up, and then stick needle nose under it. But it's supposed to take it out easier. Yeah, and I just got this tool. This is a pressure ad adapter for the VWs to pressurize the cooling system, and the part number is FZ441. So you can look that up. I bought this on eBay. Yeah, I just got a few more things. And what this is, is a locking uh, grease uh, coupler. You put on the grease gun so the hose stays attached. Yeah, and that's the part number. And what these are is pliers for taking hoses off. 